Hey guys, what's up? Everybody of us have heard about Sundarbans and they are having mangroves, these trees with nematophores roots. But do you know they are like more than just trees? They help you prevent tsunamis, they hold the lands, they prevent you against cyclones, they are an ecological indicator. Basically, there are a lot of stuff which mangroves do. So let us study everything which you need to know about mangroves. Very important topic in environment and ecology. So first of all, what are mangroves? They are very, very large. They are extensive trees. But they are growing up to medium height and they are shrubs that grow in saline coastal sediment regions. Just remember this term, saline coastal sediment regions. And they will always be in tropical and subtropical region. I will show you the diagrams also. Between 25 degree north and 25 degree south. Matlab, they will not be in Arctic and Antarctic. Wani milenge. They are the most productive wetlands in the world because they produce large quantities of organic and inorganic nutrients which they utilize because they are in coastal waters so there are large quantities of organic and inorganic nutrients so they can use this these ecosystems can use them and produce a lot of stuff so they are all obviously goes without saying they are salt tolerant species otherwise they'll not be able to grow right hello means salt fight means love okay so just remember that hello fights okay so they contain a uh, complex uh, fights uh, plants also mean like zero fights means those who grow in desert like conditions got it so they contain a very complex salt filtration system complex root system so that the salt does not destroy the plant and a lot of waves are also there so they do not uproot the plants and uh, because of the oxygen is very low so they are adopted to the low oxygen anaerobic conditions in the mud as well so you got the entire gist about mangroves so when we talk about mangroves there are uh, 15.9 million hectares of mangrove which is slightly more than 60,000 square miles and they will always be in warm waters of tropical oceans as you can see this is entire East, uh, Africa as you can see they are this somewhere here is the equator okay this is equator so as you can see like just in 25 degree north and 25 degree south of it you will not see them this is Madagascar so as you can see across the sea you can find them okay they are not inland anywhere in the country they are not there they are always across the sea when there is a lot of salty water here also you can see and you can again see like an entire this is India this, this is Sundarban by the way just to give an information this is your Indonesian archipelago in detail this is Australia's north part and uh, from like found from Florida to Argentina and they grow on both the side of west and east coast of Africa as you can see here and uh, the total mangrove forest area on the world in 2000 about 17 years ago was 1,37,000 square kilometer and it has more than 118 countries as you can see entire Australia is surrounded by it this is Papua New Guinea by the way okay so now let us see the types of mangroves so basically there are five types of mangrove by biological classification so sometimes they can just ask you uh, what are the types of mangrove so one is black mangrove one is white mangrove one is mangrove palm one is red mangrove and mangrove apple so three are color black white red and two are palm and apple okay so this is red mangrove this is white mangrove this is black mangrove okay so just remember them just remember the name nothing else then what are the features of mangroves so they are evergreen land plants and they grow on shores where do they grow where deltas are there so ganga brahmaputra delta is known for what largest uh, mangroves largest delta and uh, largest delta in the world and estuaries bays creek barrier island so it is like large majority of it lies in the bangladesh and some part is in india and it is the largest in the entire world both the delta as well as the mangroves and they are even unesco's world heritage site they are so important okay and bays creeks barrier island they are everybody there and they are adapted to saline stress waterlogged anaerobic mud so here i'll show you that salt glands are there in the surface which secrete salts so they are salt excretors and salt may accumulate in the older leaf and they'll fall okay and roots descend from the trunk to provide additional support and they are called as pneumatophores just remember this term pneumatophores so they are breathing roots and they arise from the cable roots because oxygen is very less and oxygen diffuses through the spongy tissue of the pneumatophores to the rest of the plant because every living organism barring few bacteria, need oxygen to survive okay and they need abundant sunlight and they have the ability to absorb fresh water from the saline water and pneumatophores is the term which is associated with them just remember they are also called as blind roots they rise above the surface as you can see here they are rising from the ground and they absorb oxygen from the air itself so it is a very big adaptive mechanism rhizophora mangroves they have prop roots prop roots basically whenever there are waves tsunamis like conditions so they will help them in support in harsh tidal conditions and that is why 
people should uh, not cut these mangroves because they will help in cyclones uh, tsunamis etc and salt water can literally kill the plants so mangroves have to extract them and secrete out salts and 90% of the salt can be filtered out by mangrove species so that they survive and like as i was already speaking that they secret salt through their glands salt secreting glands are there they are viviparous that is seeds are germinated in the plant itself to escape the mud conditions and mangroves have stilt roots and they provide support from the waves and that is why they are important now what is their role in the ecosystem so there are various functions which are performed in the marine ecosystem so their stilt roots have deposition of sediments which provide healthy ground for breeding of fishes they also act as nurseries for fin fish shellfish crustaceans mollusk and they provide barrier against tidal floods and tsunamis they also prevent uh, they enhance cycling of nutrients as you can see here and they prevent coastal erosion they support wildlife and amphibians they supply raw materials like wood medicinal plants edible plants etc and they act as a recreational place like sundarbans and west bengal okay then you have a lot of threats to mangroves so there is a world mangrove atlas and this will show the global distribution of mangrove here okay and it was compiled by uh, unep world conservation monitoring center in collaboration with international society for mangrove ecosystem so according to them 35 to 40 percent of the world's mangrove was lost so can you imagine like it is so so bad it is so bad in so many places so production forestry sewage sediments uh, land clearance pollutants introducing new species fishing coastal settlements if we, whenever human beings go like they kill the uh, local agriculture and local plants marine farming channel dredging in filling and reincarnation road building so all these are major threats and that is why approximately one third of entire mangroves in the world is gone and shrimp farming causes a loss of mangroves as there is accumulation of nitrogen and phosphorus in the water and it causes the roots to die they are also destroyed like whenever agriculture purposes fuel fodder mining oil spins agriculture pesticides fertilizers etc are released in water it will literally lead to the death of the mangroves and they are also threatened by human beings like urban development houses agriculture industrialization etc now let us talk about mangroves in india so as you can see they are along the coast so mangroves in there in gujarat they are in goa they are in kaveri delta region this is tamil nadu by the way this is krishna godavari region everybody knows where it is right if you don't know it then please write in the comments andaman and nicobar islands are mangroves and this is the largest mangrove in entire world that is called as sundarban mangroves and this is mahanadi mangroves so they are 3% of the world's entire mangrove vegetation in india itself 3% of entire world is there this is because see india has over 7500 km of coastline and they have they are present in 13 states and union territories okay and mangrove cover is 0.15% of in india's total geographical area and uh, 50% of india's mangroves are found in sundarbans okay so if there are 50% of entire mangroves is present in sundarban in india now there is mangroves for future program they can ask you so it is an indian initiative and the title is mangroves for future which is a strategy for promoting investment in coastal ecosystem conservation just remember this dialogue strategy for promoting investment in coastal ecosystem conservation and it is coordinated by iucn that is eight countries including asia including india and south asia southeast asia and western indian ocean and lot of collaboration is there between multiple partners like government agencies ngos research institutes un agencies and other uh, multilateral bodies and it will also oversee and guide the entire indian country program under iucn uh, mff india and other mff varieties that is mangrove for the future Uh, it will include promoting environmentally sustainable livelihood opportunities like ecotourism coastal communities ke liye building resilience to climate change natural disasters through community participation for greater coastal area decision making and disaster risk reduction planning then you have national wetland conservation program that is nwcp so wetland they are basically consisting of marshes or swamps so government of india operationalized national wetland conservation program that is nwcp Uh, and it was in very close collaboration with the state government during 1985 1986 and under this program wetlands have been identified by ministry of environment and it requires urgent conservation and management initiatives now mangroves are very very important for wetland conservation what is the aim of this scheme aim is obviously conservation and wise use of wetlands in the country wise use so that you don't exploit them to prevent their further degradation and objectives include to lay down policy guidelines okay for conservation and management of wetlands 
to undertake intensive conservation measures in priority wetlands to monitor implementation of the program and to prepare an inventory of Indian wetlands. So thank you for watching this lesson. Have an awesome day.